Hey guys, it's Miss Beckham. I am redoing today's experiment from our live class because I want to kind of slow down and explain what a calorimeter is a little bit better and also redo our data so that we get more accurate results. So just as a reminder, this calorimeter has an outer cylinder made out of or lined with aluminum and it's got an inner soda can that's hung up inside of it and you can see those dowels that it's hanging on and it's filled with some water and we have measured the mass of the water that's inside that can. Um, and we're going to basically light a chip on fire underneath that can, and we're going to see how the temperature changes. We're going to measure the temperature of the water beforehand and the temperature of the water afterward. And the reason that we're doing this is because we know about the relationship, scientists already know about the relationship between water and, um, and heat. And a significant property of water is that it takes a lot of energy to heat it. And we actually know exactly how much energy it takes. Water, basically, it takes 4,184 joules of heat, which is one calorie. It basically takes one calorie um, for the temperature of one kilogram of water to increase one degree. So we know exactly how much energy it takes to increase the temperature of water. So if we see how much our water temperature increases, we can see how much energy we was in that chip. And so that's what we're gonna do here. And so I've measured the temperature of the water beforehand and found it to be 23.3 degrees. Now I'm going to light the chip on fire and we're gonna let it burn. Um, a couple things to note about this experiment is that there is a lot of room for error even now because the heat is not being trapped inside of that container so not all of the heat is being absorbed into the water. Some of the heat is leaving on top and uh, not being absorbed into the water, which creates room for error because we're assuming that all of the heat is transferred completely to the water, which is not true. Um, another thing that you might note is that the chip doesn't burn up completely. And that's actually okay, and it won't cause any error with that because we measured the mass of the chip beforehand and we measured the mass of the chip afterward. Uh, which we'll do next. So that difference, we're gonna only use the amount that was burned. And so that won't cause any error that the chip did completely burn. Another thing is that we don't want the thermometer to touch the end of the can. We only want the thermometer to touch just the water. And so I'm trying to kind of be careful with that. And you can see here that the max temperature that was recorded here, looks like it was 31.2, was our max temperature at the very end. Now I'm going to weigh the chip to see how much of the chip was burned. So now we only have 0.42 grams of chip remaining. And at the beginning, we had, I believe, exactly 1.00 grams of chip. All right, so now I have all of my data put into my data table. My starting mass of water was 62.4 grams, or my, my overall mass of water was 62.4 grams. My initial mass of the chip was one gram. My final mass of the chip was 0.42 grams. And here you can see the change in temperature from 23.3 to 31.2. Now we're gonna calculate the energy that was released by burning the chip. So we are gonna use the equation Q equals C times M times delta T. And we're gonna put in all of our units along with it. So our C, C stands for specific heat. And the specific heat of water is one calorie per gram, one calorie per gram. The mass of the water was 62.4 grams. So for the change in temperature, we need to take the final temperature and subtract the initial temperature from it. So we need to do 31.2 minus 23.3. 31.2 minus 23.3 is 7.9. That's how much the temperature changed. So 7.9 degrees right there. And now we just need to multiply all of that. But just as a side note, you can see what units cancel out. Our grams here is on the bottom and our grams here is on top. So grams divided by grams is gonna just cancel out. So the unit that we're left with is calories, which is what we want. So now we're gonna do one times 62.4 times 7.9 and I'm getting 492.96 and this is how many calories 
we're in our same goal. Um, but you should note that this is actually, um, no, that this is how many calories were used in our sample. So now we're gonna come look up here at the actual number of calories in a lace chip. And the calories that are in a lace chip are actually in units of kilocalories. So we're gonna take note of that in just a minute. And we're gonna do a little bit of converting. So it takes 160 uh, kilocalories per serving. And it looks like for every one serving, we're dealing with 28 grams, right? So you see how our servings are canceling out here? So now we have kilocalories per gram. So I'm gonna do in my calculator 160 divided by 28. And looks like there are about 5.71 kilocalories for every one gram. Well, how many grams did we use? because we started with 1.00 grams and we ended with 0.42 grams of unused chip. So 1.00 minus 0.42, we used 0.58 grams, okay? So we're gonna multiply this by 0.58 to um, accurately compare here. So 5.71 times 0.58 is 3.31, I'll stop there, kilocalories, okay? Well, if you see here, our units up here are in calories. So to accurately compare, let's convert these to kilocalories as well. One kilocalorie, there's a thousand calories in one kilocalorie. So we're gonna do 492.96, divided by a thousand. And I'm getting 0 0.493. So if you look, the accurate number of kilocalories in that chip should be about 3.31 kilocalories in that chip. But the number that we got was 0.493 with our experiment. So it looks like we had some significant error there with our experiment. That error could be associated with the temperature of, uh, a lot of the temperature was actually leaving the, cal the calorimeter without it being measured because it wasn't being absorbed by the water. So it wasn't a perfect calorimeter in that way. And I think that most of our error probably came from that right there. 